Ladies and gentlemen, the bell should witness a special man from Lebanon, His Excellency. Put your hands together for the President of Sierra Leone, His Excellency, Excellency Julius Mardavir. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. Together. It's the highlights of the evening. Newspaper has always assured you that 
President Liu is here and hurt you. Here and hurt you. From a COVID-19 infected president in Lebanon, I was later shocked on my return from Lebanon by the front page publication of Saloon Times newspaper on the 31st of September. I missed COVID-19. You returned from honeymoon. But the honeymoon. Where I was so that was courtesy of my wife. <laughs> on that note, let me thank the media for your immeasurable contribution on the fight against COVID-19. You have played a positive role, and that is what we expect of you. I will clap for you if you are not clap for yourself. However, not everyone in the media has the confidence in us. On the 2nd of June, the Standard Times newspaper carried this a shocking headline. COVID-19 operations to collapse, embezzlement, corruption, and poor administration, etc. So thank you to the Egypt National Coordinator and the entire NACOVA team because COVID-19 operations did not collapse. But as you know, the CDC and the World Health Organization actually said that we are one of four countries that will be considered safe in Africa. Given the appointment of Alpha Helm as the strategic advisor of social mobilization and food security in the office of the Indian National Coordinator was not spared by the media. On the 11th May, Salon Times newspaper published this final headline on its front page. Red apprentice stone driver in green car. <laughs> well, I'm sure even the red apprentice know that three of them has only one destination, and that is the new direction. So let us have faith in ourselves as we are and the structures we create. The last decade may have shaken that faith, but the fight against COVID 19 has given us an opportunity to restore that faith and show the world that Syria can succeed where other countries have failed. Tonight, I'm proud to say that the repeal of Part 5 of the Public Order Act of 1965 is no longer in the pipeline. When we sing the world. We are celebrating the end of an era that criminalized life and sedition after 55 years of, this, of its existence. The New Age newspaper described the repeal of Part 5 of on its front page as an epoch of media emancipation in Syria. I cannot agree more. Thank you. The repeal of Part 5 of the Public Order Act of 1965 and the enactment of the media of the Independent Media Commission, IMC Act 2020, we enhance professionalism in the media with several key benefits that will make the journalism profession an enviable career. Particularly, if the Independent Media Commission Act 2020 is carefully implemented backed by a clear media code of practice. It will attract investment opportunities, enhance social security scheme for media practitioners, among others. Following the signing of the appeal on the 28th of October of this year, I promise that my government will review cases of all persons facing charges of criminal and seditious libel under the old law. On the 16th of November, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, pursuant to Section 44, Subsection 1 of the Criminal Procedures Act of 1965, entered a non proceeding in the matter titled The State Versus Dr. Sylvia O'Blyne and Hussein Moxie Sisei, thereby discontinuing the case.
Interestingly, on the 17th of November, Global Times published on its front page, government of talk and do. Amnesty for severe blinding and cold accused. If we say it by mistake, we do it swiftly. We are very intentional. But if it, if it, when we make the mistake, we will make sure it is done. The intention of Honorable Dr. Kanda Yonkela of the NTC, and this matter did not go unnoticed in this case. Appealing to the former Attorney General and Minister of Justice not to oppose bail application for Dr. Sylvia O'Brien, the Kabash newspaper on Tuesday, 26 May, published on its front page, Yonkela calls on Bill to be a good political Samaritan. <laughs> For me, it was never about being a political Samaritan because I argue at the sign of the repeal that civilized and democratic countries cannot be seen as jailers of journalists when journalists exercise their professional responsibility to report objectively and ethically. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the year 2020 has also been exciting in many ways and the, reporting, and the reporting of the newspaper on some of those events has not just been informative and educative, but also very interesting. Following my address to the nation on the state of law and order after a state of violence earlier in the year, on May 12th, May, May 11th, the news, the news 24 newspaper published on this one page, so you can wait. <laughs> Why is Calabash newspaper carried on its front page? As in response to violent or Kiva, the use speaks fire. <laughs> this is like a dragon. Well, whether so Germanic or the use speaks fire, I am sure those who who the message was meant for got the message very loud and clear. Friends in the media. During the course of 2020, I have also observed that the silence of the Ground Dry slogan was sponsored by the many COVID-19 interventions facilitated by NASA. That trigger this Saloon Times newspaper headline on the 14th of August with 4.8 billion views, President Bio soak the ground for over 2,000 workers in the tourism sector. This intervention was the COVID-19 emergency cash transfer, which is targeting about 6,000 households with vulnerable people in the informal sector, such as petty traders and low-paid workers in the hotel and the tourism sector. Additionally, in July, the COVID-19 Effect Pool or Social Safety Net Initiative also targeted 35,000 extremely poor households across the country, including persons with disability. In fact, ministers, deputy ministers, and other political appointees of the ABC administration. <laughs> Why is the Ground Dry slogan was silent in 2020? The new slogan emerged for Bonote. <laughs> which was introduced from the album of the Venerable Emasi Bokari. That, as you could expect, such a newspaper went on the rampage with it, trying hard to give it a partisan tale spin. On the 14th of August, my friends at Syria Express, Media Express, media newspaper, gave it the twist. The economy is still messy. Embassy undresses the SFPP government. It was also the headline for the Provincial Times newspaper of the 12th of August. Embassy Boker blasts the new direction government. In fact, the Freedom Post newspaper on the, on the 11th of August took it further. Embassy's coconut aid may trigger cabinet reshuffle. 
even with the Guardian newspaper, even the Guardian newspaper could not be outdone on this, as evidence in its 11th of August headline. In President Bios Coconut Head, criminal level, law repealed. First sexual offenses model court established. Free quality education introduced. 21 billion leons retrieved from corrupt officials. The fight against corruption strengthened. Ensured payment of debt left by the last government. With all of these and more in the coconut head, it, is, it shows this a strong coconut head. <laughs> However, despite the popularity of the coconut head song, certain opposition papers were still not satisfied as they thought Emerson could have done more to criticize the government on everything rare or imaginary. So the indomitable and irretrievable and ir irretrievable irretrievable awareness times. I find it difficult to, to get the, the adjective. <laughs> Newspaper wrote in Adebayo Street's MRC, so naked. Really? But as usual, there was no evidence. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as also expected, the commissioning of the 50 garbage trucks on Tuesday, 1st December, was upsetting for certain newspapers, for instance. On Tuesday, 3rd December, the Nationalist newspaper couldn't conceal its revulsion in questioning in the this questioning headline. Is that a PP, a government of the two box? <laughs> Is SLPP a government of dirty box? But that voice was not unanimous, as even our own Awareness Times newspaper showed in this headline. As 50 garbage trucks rolled through, massive snow was called to protest against the regime. That reference, some of the publications in response to certain policy initiatives have also been intriguing. Imagine this publication on our new decentralization policy, which seeks to increase political participation at local level in the Syria Express media of 9th December. New decentralization policy. Opposition parties reject SLPP's dictatorship to cascade and share power becomes dictatorship. I will see. As if that was not bad enough, the Chief Minister was in Parliament for the enactment of the Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion Act of 2020. And after accepting so much time and effort, the Night Watch newspaper on Wednesday, 9th December, recognized that F recognize that effort with this banner. In Parliament, opposition abandons the Chief Minister. I'm sure the main opposition has never forgiven the Chief Minister for the 2018 GTT report <laughs> for the egregious. Sometimes, even when, go when government is so determined to build the governance infrastructure, at district level, certain newspapers are only interested in politics. For instance, after the first fire station was commissioned in Kailan, on the 23rd of November, Awareness Times had this to say, as for the local bonds, Mother Bio gives new fire station to Kailan town. Well, but local, don't worry, because there is going to be a new fire station in Budloko. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, away from whom the recent elections in Guinea have also had an impact in Sweden. 
Imagine the Night Watch newspaper carrying the front page headline on the 8th of October saying Vice President Jude Jello recruits mercenaries, says Guinea President. I'm reading it. The first question that came to my mind was how Jude is connected. For the past years, my wife, the First Lady, has also done so many amazing things on the fight against rape and sexual and gender-based violence in Syria. She has led the hands of our girls movement, mobilized stakeholders, and invested so much time and resources traveling on the national campaign. Despite all of these wonderful things she has done and continues to do, in March this year, Syria Express, Syria Express Media newspaper published this commendation. First Lady makes Syria dry. <laughs> well, I know my wife loves farming, but she's, she has yet st not started dairy farming for the production of milk. Let me now put the shoe on, on the other foot and ask this question. Who are we missing tonight that have always been with us for the past two media cocktail events? Can I, let me ask again. Who are we missing tonight that have always been with us for the past two media cocktail events? <laughs> Thankfully, also, our information of the case are not here tonight. Isn't it strange that I will not be getting that usual question? When is the final, uh, the final information of the case going to be announced, sir? We have dealt with that. But when we see things, we do them. So through information of the case, we are recruited, trained, and deployed in various radio missions abroad. The main objective of the recruitment and training was to enhance the capacity of the attaches and support their, their transition into their new roles as boarding diplomats. Just on the issue of travel, you say I travel like a bird. <laughs> I, also note, I also note that the Times newspaper has not been happy with my recent travels following the resumption of flights. They are really great friends. Hence, following my recent trip abroad on Monday 14th December, the Times newspaper had this on its front page. More padiem, <laughs> fat pockets, rotting economy, flying, flying president resumes flying mission. Well, over the last few years, the flying missions have brought millions and millions of dollars to Sierra Leone and substantially rebranded our country. Are we not all proud? of the Sierra Leone we have today. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, government was greatly concerned about the absence of a designated government print media outlet for the dissemination of government information flowing, following the induced collapse of the Slena and its associated publications. The Sierra Leone Daily, Me Daily Mail and Sierra Leone News we are pleased to note that the, the Minister of Information and Communication was able to mobilize and leverage private sector resources to rehabilitate the collapsed building and revitalize Sierra News. Thank you, Mr. Minister. It is also important to know that through my engagement with the United Kingdom government, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office has committed to support the development of the Sierra Leone media, especially in areas of institutional capacity building of professional bodies like Sludge, its affiliate bodies, 
and the Independent Media Commission. I have also been reliably informed by the Minister that the Ministry of Information and Communication, in collaboration with Slash, has put the requisite tools together to host an investment conference on the media that will attract investment in the media to alleviate poverty, media poverty and poverty in the media. The investment conference is expected to hold early next year in commemorating the 50th, 50th anniversary of Sludge and the 60th anniversary of our independence as a country. I also want to commend the Minister and his team for the successful inaugural uh, media treat on our manifesto commitment held in Bo this week. The media has always been with us on this journey since the launch of the manifesto and we must continue to take them along as critical partners to provide an independent assessment of the many great things we have done and continue to do as a new direction government. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by revealing that this year my relationship with the media has been so great that such newspapers, such newspapers, even now offer me spiritual advice. <laughs> For instance, on the 21st of, 21st of August, the Night Watch newspaper published on its front page, President Bill, beware of the devil. <laughs> I've seen going in search of this devil, but to no appeal. But I've just been reminded that the devil is in the detail. <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, my, friend, my friends in the media, we query, we set to our queries and continue to work together for the betterment of Australia. Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2021.